Hello and welcome to Code for Kids. My name is Annabelle and I'll be taking you through this entire first lesson of my first website, Learning HTML and CSS Lesson 1. I'm going to take you through the whole lesson from beginning to end, giving you lots of teacher tips and tricks and ensuring that you feel completely comfortable teaching the lesson. After watching this video, you too will become a coding expert. Here we are at the login page and your school and each school will have a unique login with their school.thelessonspace.com and learners will log in with their full name and their password as I'm doing now. If you have any problems logging in, please contact us and we will help you. This is also for editing students or any other issues you have with uploading your students. So here we are on the home page. I'm also going to make comments on how to teach specific sections how you can challenge your learners further and suggest some questions you can ask to, and highlight areas where your learners might battle. So we're going to click into my first website and then you can see lesson one. I'm going to do this video as if I was teaching the lesson. So once your learners get to this page, they can sit with their hands in their laps and we're going to start posing a few introductory questions. What do you think of when you think of the internet? Now you're going to get answers like Google, YouTube, Firefox, Facebook, but really what the internet is, it's a global computer network providing us with information and communication. So it's a global computer network providing us with information and communication. So try and get your learners to grapple with that, what is the internet, and let them come up with a few of the answers. So what kind of information are we talking about when we talk about a global network providing us with information? Well, this is information such as websites, which is exactly what we are going to be coding today. So what do you think about, this is your second question, what do you think about when you think about programming or coding? Now remember, those two words can be used interchangeably. Learners are definitely going to say hacking, making a program or app, something you do on the computer, and get them to flesh out these answers. But really, what is coding? It's the way that we, as humans, speak to the computer in a language that the computer understands. So today we are going to be building websites and speaking in that language. And this is the same language that the engineers at YouTube and at Google use. Now that's amazing, but it is going to be a little bit difficult. So when learners do get stuck, this is going to be like no other lesson. They've got to talk to each other. They've got to collaborate, use teamwork and help one another out. But when they are helping each other, they can only use their mouth and not their mouse when explaining the answer. So they cannot reach across and do it for their neighbor. All right, so let's dive into the first lesson. Here we are on the first tab of my country. So I'm going to do this lesson on South Africa, but it can also be done on the United States, the UK, Australia, Holland, Botswana, or any other of the 195 countries on the planet. Right, so here we have the code, the gobbledygook on the left hand side. What is this? But this is our coding. On the right hand side, we've got the website. And we can dive straight into it. Online number six, you can see the tasks here are written in gray. Online number six, remove the question mark and write your name. So here I'm going to remove the question mark on line number six and write my name. You can see that it comes up on the right hand side. Get the learners to tell you this. What happened here? Oh, the name came up on the right hand side. So what did we do? We spoke to the computer in a language the computer understand, understood and that is what came up. You can now congratulate them on their first line of written code. Now you can let your learners go onto task number two and answer the 12 question marks with the correct answers. They can do this on their own and you can help out if you need to. I'm going to go through this sped up, but feel free to go through it on your own My Country tab. Remember that if you then fill it out and you want to reset it for when you teach the lesson, you can press reset tab and it will go back to how it was originally. You can also delete a whole lot of code and if this happens to some of your learners, which I'm sure it will, and it messes up the website, you can also right click on the tab and reset it. 
before we go through the rest of the 12 question marks, I just want to show you a couple of interesting things. As we scroll down to the bottom, you can see that these links here are the same as these links here, and it's like a real website. So what we've got is languages, and it'll move us onto the language tab. Um, colors, it'll move us onto the colors tab. The same with headers, which we'll get to a bit later. And then you can head back to my country. You can also move along the tabs at the top, which will move the code. All right, so we have coded everything and our learners have got to this point here. Some of them are going to be wanting to move on and this is a nice interjection of some information. So we wanna have a look at what we have been doing. What are some of the things they have noticed about the code? Hopefully they're gonna say that this one's in red. Okay, and we've been filling in things in white and that there's also code in yellow. Can, they can also notice the greater than or less than signs, which they've seen in maths as well. Uh, like the crocodile mouths. Ask students if they notice that the word color is spelt with American spelling. There is no U in the word. This is because the computer language was originally made by Americans. So if we use the word color with a U, the computer won't understand us and it won't work. So a nice time to step over into the languages tab and talk about what exactly these different languages are. So in the same way that if you want to speak to someone from Spain, you're going to have to speak and write and read in Spanish. When you want to speak to the computer in a language it understands, you need to speak in one of these three of many coding languages. So we've got three coding languages here that we're going to talk about. And let's start with the HTML. So HTML is our builder. Everything that is written in red is in HTML, and it is keeping the entire website together giving the website structure. You've got CSS, she's the artist, she's giving everything the colors. So when we have colors here, or, or on the My Country page, when we add in color, CSS is doing that um, and adding color to us. Here, the JavaScript, she's the engineer, she makes functions move on their own. You can click here to see JavaScript in action, so making things move and using functions to do that. Today, we're only looking at HTML and CSS. Something that's really nice is to give them an example of a bookshelf, which is often found in IT labs or media centers where you teach this lesson. So the bookshelf itself is the builder, keeping all the books together. CSS are the books, giving the bookshelf lots of color, and then JavaScript would be the action of taking a book out of the bookshelf, the movement of that. So this is just a languages tab. There are no tasks on this tab, but it's to use as a teaching tool and to provide your learners with information. So now let's go across to my country and let's start putting in some color. If we scroll all the way down to line number 77, you can still see we are following the tasks. Update the background color on line number four to write background color, green. So we scroll all the way up to line number four, section, ID, header, background color and here you need to take really careful attention to detail it is background color after the colon and then you write green learners get super excited about the colors changing as they should and task number four all the way on line number 78 says find other places to change color on your website so every time we see the word color we can write color after the colon and it'll change here background color and my background color goes blue. Let them have a play around with this and really enjoy changing the different colors and seeing where it changes. Here you can see the main section changed to blue. Here the span style of my name is Annabelle changed to red. Nice opportunity here once they've changed the color for a little bit is to talk about whether this is an appealing website. Would I want to log onto this website? Is it aesthetically pleasing to the eye? Now, no, it's not because green and blue really clash. They need to think about different websites that they might log on to. Why do they like it? Well, because it looks appealing. And so maybe we need to choose colors that are actually um, matching or that go or that make it look pleasing to the eye. And so that's why we have given them this colors tag tab where they can choose all sorts of different colors um, from medium blue to powder blue 
to royal blue to slate blue or a whole lot of different colors that they can then choose to make their website look pleasing. So if you go back to my country, you can also get to the colors tab in the bottom here. And now they might want to change this green to dark orange. And we go back to my country and there it's changed to dark orange. Still doesn't really look like it matches, but they can use a whole lot of different colors slate blue, medium spring green, and that changed my name there. So remember, if they start putting spaces here, as you can see on the colors tab, there are no spaces. Spelling does count, however, the capital letters don't. So the, the, if there, there are spaces between medium spring and green, it won't work. So you can't put spaces in between there, but let them try and problem solve and figure that out. Remember, they should be asking each other, trying to help each other out to figure out the answer. This really helps you as the teacher, so you don't have to have all the answers all of the time. Right, so we've done the languages tab, we've done the colors tab, and now we're going across to headers. Again, this is a nice teaching a tab, and what I say to the students is straight away, what does H stand for? Most of the time they say, I have no clue. But then they start reading. H stands for header. They can either read it on the right hand side on the website or they start getting the feeling of it being on the left hand side in the code, reading the code and then seeing it come up on the website. What does P stand for? P stands for paragraph. What is the biggest header? H1 is the biggest header. How many headers are there? What is the smallest header? H6. Start posing those questions and let them talk about it. Now here's the task in gray. Change H3 to H6 and then to H1. So I'm on line number 15 here. We need to change H3 to H6. So we're gonna change it in the tags. These are called, this is the opening tag. We would also need to change it in the closing tag. What I want you and the learners to recognize here is what is going to change. We've got here, for example, here is a header three written in between these tags. So we delete the H3 to H6 and we can see it went really small. Ask your learners what happened. It went really small. We always have to put in a closing tag as well to tell us where we're stopping. Thereafter, we need to change H6 now to H1. What happened? It went really big. That's because H1 is our biggest, H6 is our smallest. What is P with the opening crocodile mouth and closing crocodile mouth or greater than and less than sign? That's an opening tag for a paragraph. How about forward slash P? This is a closing tag for a paragraph. So this is what is gonna make things go into paragraphs and not just all one run online. Now we go down to the bonus task. This is only if you have time because my new country is a really awesome um, web page and it's really interesting. So if you don't have time, maybe learners can log into this at home. They would just put in into the URL and they can they can try it at home if you do have time and um, you can go through it because we want to make header one to header six in the colors of the rainbow i'm going to go through this quickly um, but you can also follow all right so we finished up there going from red all the way down to indigo what you would have noticed is what I was typing in here, um, everything below had a little bit less information than the one above. What we want learners to have a look at here is that it's really just to spot the difference and they're typing in the HTML and then the CSS. Right, and so finally we can move on to our last tab in our website. Um, here are all the tabs, my country, languages, colors, headers, and then my new country, which is a really exciting one. Learners are gonna get super creative here and make up a name for their very own country. Challenge your learners to do something different to their neighbors, to change the color by using the colors tab, to answer all the questions and to be really creative in this. It's a chance for them to really get into the code and start editing it in any way they can. Remember, if they delete code, they can always reset the tab. So I'm gonna start off here by choosing my country called the Republic of Zango. And so that changed there and you know we might want to start putting in pack background colors straight away they can add as many different colors as they like to wherever they like 
you can on, they can answer all the question marks on what where is the country located famous food in this country what is the national sport and then we get down to national symbols and this is a really this is super exciting because they can draw their own flag alongside in the flag tab so we've got the flag tab up here learners can draw using the different shapes and tools using different colors they can draw different symbols and tell us what those symbols mean figuring out all the, the different things they can use here and what's exciting is that it will then generate in their flag. It's the same with the national animal. They may want to make an animal with, it, with an ellipse, you know, looking like a snowman. And they can really get creative here and draw whatever they like. And again, it will then render um, as the national animal. Answering questions on planning a trip, three things you must do to come and visit. What's the national language, the country's population, and the president's name? So this is really just a fun thing to get them, to get you to see whether they have understood some of the coding. Um, this lesson was made on headers and paragraphs, as well as colors, and really just an introduction to the code. Before we finish up, I want to show you um, something really awesome where they can actually publish their website. So right at the bottom, you can click the open and share button and you've got the website there. This link is then shareable to parents. You can send on email. You can put it on the newsletter. The students could send it to you by emailing to you or putting it on Google Classroom. They can also then go across on their links to see the different um, tabs, the colors tab, the headers tab. You can see that if they've done that there. And then also obviously the My New Country tab something really exciting and tangible that they've actually made and coded an entire website. To get out of here, learners can just exit and it will save automatically. Right, so that is the end of lesson one. I hope you have as much fun teaching it as we did. All the best for the lesson.